I love it when an invention comes together. Hey everyone, it's Jason from GameRave.com, otherwise known as Danger Boy, and this is GameRave TV. Today we bring back the letter legacy and we are talking about the letter B. Now, despite B's uh, technically small allotment of games within it, it does have a very, very nice, diverse, healthy choice of games. Uh, you've got bowling, uh, bass fishing, uh, Bushido blades, you've got ballerinas, um, just a whole bunch of good stuff, even uh, pool under the billards terminology is in there. Of course, let's start by running down the list of games that didn't quite make the cut to be the B game you have to play. Uh, first of all, Backstreet Billards, excellent little pool game, has an RPG mode to it. Uh, Ballistic, excellent puzzle game if you've ever played Zuma on the 360 or PS3, there you go. Um, Barbie Explorer. Now, coming from me, that sounds weird, but if you're a parent and have a daughter, and you're really sick of the games like, you know, Barbie's Secret Shopper and, you know, Dora and, you know, Lego games that make pink pieces because they're girls. Barbie Explorer was one of the few games that said, screw that, we're going to give your daughter an adventure. And it basically plays like Crash Bandicoot, and it actually is not as challenging as Crash Bandicoot, but it does present an actual game to them. It's not just this stupid, you know... It's not a game that dumbs down their intelligence. It's a really nifty game for a girl, and I highly recommend it. Batman games. <sighs> no. Aside from Batman, uh, the arcade game. That's a guilty pleasure. You can pick that up for a couple bucks cheap. All the rest? Ugh. Ballerina Toshindens. Now, granted this game was all the rage when it first came out, but it really hasn't aged well. Um, in working on a secret project, um, going back, uh, three is just atrocious. Um, one and two are... are playable but like man when you're sitting there with Tekken and Soul Blade <laughs> you really just you don't want to play Ballerina Toshinden at all. Beyond the Beyond one of the first RPGs for the system it's standard nothing big but it's worth a once at least a one playthrough of it. Uh, Blast Chamber. Blast Chamber is awesome and if it were not for a couple other games that I had to will down to be the top you know three Blast Chamber is like Bomberman on crack. Um, basically, it's you're inside a rotating cube up to four players. Basically, just get your bomb to the portal and hope you don't get blown up in the in the process. Um, it's a very under the radar. Most people don't realize it's on the system. It's kind of hard to play in a modern day TV because the characters are so small. But I highly recommend checking it out. It's pretty good for a party. Uh, Blasto, of course, a fun little game starring the late Phil Hartman as the voice. Um, Bloody Roar one and two, uh, excellent fighting games. Very rambunctious. Uh, not. Not as technically deep as some of the other fighting games, but you can transform into an animal and beat people up. What more do you need? Seriously. Um, Bomberman games, most of them are pretty good. Broken Helix. Bruce Campbell is the voice of the character in the game, and it's um, what they call a 4D game. Basically, as you're playing the game, everything else is happening at the same time. So it's not like you can just sit there and wait for a character or a boss. Shit's getting real, and you need to get it done fast. Like It's almost like how D was, where it was always moving, only had like two hours to complete it. Broken Helix is, is longer, obviously, in that department, but the fact that you had to get moving and be moving all the time as soon as possible made it a great, great game. And of course, Bruce Campbell's voiceovers are just awesome with it. Obviously, the Bust a Groove and Bust a Move games, uh, Bust a Move being your nice little puzzle games, the cute little dinosaurs, you know, get three balls in a row and win and all that good stuff. Um, Bust a Groove, uh, for those of you that have rhythm, unlike me, um, another two excellent games. They, I, I I wouldn't say the music genre is dead, but it's more or less moved to like mobile uh, type things like the phone and so forth. Busted Groove and 1 and 2 are still some of the best music and best visual watching you'll ever see on the PlayStation. Like just some of the dancing uh, motion capture they did was great. Um, of course, I would be doing it no justice, justice if I did not mention the Brunswick bowling games. Um, if you've ever played Ten Pin Alley, Brunswick was more of the grown-up you know, professional bowlers game of Tenpin Alley made by the same guys at Adrenaline. Um, probably, if it weren't for Wii Sports, Brunswick Bowling on the PlayStation and the Intellivision's Bowling would be the two greatest bowling games ever made. Uh, but now you can lump Wii Sports into that. Just amazing detail, amazing pin physics. It was great. Um, there's also, of course, the Breath of Fire Stream 4. Um, also good games. But let's get down to the nitty gritty now. The top three B games. First is The Underdog. Board Game Top Shop. 
holy hell did this come out of nowhere when it first came out. Um, imagine an anime-based Monopoly, but instead of houses and hotels, you're building storefronts in a mall. And you can actually expand the stores like you would the houses and hotels and stuff like that. But what made the game awesome is instead of trying to bankrupt the other players, you're basically trying to buy them out. Um, while the game is awesome as a party game and play with multiple people, when playing in single player mode, it can get kind of long in the tooth based on the actions of the, uh, the AI characters. Um, it's really, really good. You can find it for literally a couple bucks. In fact, I even consider it a pile of shame, technically. Um, if you find it, track it down. However, as good as it was, it wasn't good enough to be the B game. So, the two games that come down to it, and we'll keep you in suspense, so I'll just go right to them. The runner-up B game is Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Blood Omen, when it first came out, was not so much a slap in the face, to role-playing game gamers, it was more of like a kick in the nuts. Um, at the time, Japanese RPGs like Final Fantasy, Breath of Fire, stuff like that, were all hitting the system, you know, we were finally getting all the games we wanted and so forth, and out of nowhere comes Blood Omen, a very mature, very adult, very grindy, very visceral um, RPG with its main, uh, main protagonist, and it basically flipped everything. Um, it was a grown-up RPG for grown-ups to play. Um, you didn't have your wide-eyed characters, you didn't have your sappy music. This was some poor dude who just got his ass beat into being a vampire. Um, while the game is phenomenal, uh, one, it can be acquired on the PC for cheaper than it is on the P like PlayStation. Uh, B, the PC version is um, better laid out, better the loading time is a little bit better, and so forth. Um, the PS1 game, despite being amazing, is very, very long in the load times in certain places, and that kept it out of being the first place game. So, that leaves our number one game. So, if you haven't figured out by now, our number one game for the PlayStation that you have to play is Bushido Blade number one. Um, at the time of its release, Square was good being a very experimental company. Um, this was uh, people that were known only for their RPGs, and on the PlayStation, they released everything from baseball games in Japan to action games in Japan. Uh, we got, like, Chocobo Racing, uh, you know, tech games, all that, all good stuff. With Boshido Blade, it was a fighting game, but instead of going after Tekken or Street Fighter, it was a game that said, hey, guess what? You can die in one shot. Tough titties. At it. And from that point on, like, you have to play it. Like, it's an open world fighting game. Like, when you start and it goes go, you can go F this and you're out. And you can chase each other infinitely. Um, there were mountainsides, forests, bridges, um, I can't, uh, inside like a sewer area. Um, each character had their own strengths and weaknesses, but you could also equip one of multiple weapons. So you had to balance out like a fast character and a slow character with a heavy, medium, you know, light weapon. And then they had three different stances in their pose. So it was essentially a very, very complex game of paper, rock, scissors. But like I said, there were no health bars. You literally could whack at someone a hundred times and not do anything if you're just hitting them on the shoulder or the knee. Or you could possibly, you know, break their arm or leg and they'd start limping. Or you could kill them in one shot. Um, it was, I actually got the game as an import from Japan when it first came out because I couldn't wait and because I was a square saw. But yeah, there you have it. Bushido Blade 1 is for your B game for the Letter Legacy. Um, th this game has never been reproduced. Even the sequel, Bushido Blade 2, didn't live up to it. Um, and it's a crime because this... Square's gone through a lot of crap in recent years, and we'll just even ignore their comment about Tomb Raider not being a bit bestseller. <laughs> but... Square needs to go back to this. Go back to their, their experimental roots. Um, it was such a golden era on the PlayStation if you were a Squaresoft fanboy. And one of these days we'll get back there. Um, but we'll see if Final Fantasy XV holds up. That being said, guys, have a great week. Have a good weekend, uh, depending on when this video goes up. We will see you next time on Pause Mode. I'm out of here. Take care, guys.